Hello everyone, I'm Mrs. Bearden. I'm a librarian for St. Tammany Parish Schools. Welcome back to my story time. Before we start reading today, we want to talk about a very special word called activism. Now, the definition of activism is the use of direct action to achieve an end, either for or against an issue. When I think of the word activism, I usually think of politics or a, a very strong personal issue that people have. But in today's story, it has to do with a community. And it certainly comes out with a very good end. So, for a great example of activism, we are going to read the story called Follow the Moon Home. A tale of one idea, 20 kids, and 100 sea turtles. Now, you might um, recognize the author's name. His name is Philip Cousteau. Yes, the son of Jacques Cousteau. And it's also written by Deborah Hopkinson and illustrated by Milo So. Follow the Moon Home. I always need help finding my way, especially in a new place. Before long, you'll feel right at home, Viv. I wasn't so sure. So it looks like Viv has moved to a new community. Welcome, Vivian, called Mr. J. You're just in time for the fun. We're looking for a problem to solve. I got out my pencil and I bit my lip. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see Mr. J right here. And he has poster board here. On the poster board, it says, Class Project Community Action. Number one, identify. Find a problem to solve. Use your eyes, ask questions. Two, plan. Gather information and figure out what to do. Three, take action. Put your ideas into action. Four, tell the story. Show how you and we can make a difference. And finally, five, reflect. Think about what you did and what you might do next. These are summer school outdoor activities. So it looks like Viv has moved to a new community. She's going to a summer school um, activity center. And her teacher is trying to get them to think about things that they can do to make their community better. I rode my bike all over town looking for a problem, but mostly I got lost. On Saturday, I took Samson and Luna for a run on the beach. Mostly they pulled me. Let's make a gigantic hole, I gasped, plopping down. My big digger and my little digger sprang into action. Suddenly, it was raining sand. Looks like fun, but be sure to fill in that hole, said this man walking by. It's nesting season. See him pointing to the sign. I smoothed out the sand and we all went to look. What do holes have to do with turtles? It's because of the baby, said a voice. I whirled to see a girl from school. I'm Clementine, she reminded me. Baby sea turtles need a clear path to the sea. Holes and sandcastles get in their way. I didn't know we had sea turtles here. Samson pulled on the leash. We do. Oh, and look what happened to this baby, cried Clementine. Why were you going the wrong way, little one? Mr. J had told us to use our own eyes, so that night Mom and I went back to the beach. As darkness fell, we could see bright lights winking on one by one along the shore. That's it, I said. The lights in the beach houses are the problem. Why is that, Mom asked. When baby sea turtles hatch, they follow the strongest light they see, I exclaimed. So if they head away from the sea, they get dehydrated and they die. 
My heart sank as I stared at the houses. There were so many. How can we ask all these people to turn off their lights? Well, most of these houses are vacation rentals, Mom said. That means new people come to stay every few days. We'd have to knock on doors every night. Clearly, I needed help to solve this problem, and I knew just how to get it. On Monday morning, Clementine and I raised our hands first. We told the glass what we'd learned and observed about the loggerhead sea turtles. The sea turtle eggs are starting to hatch, I went on. To save the hatchlings, we need the whole class, the whole town, to help. And that's how Lights Out for Loggerhead began. Now, remember that page I showed you with Mr. J? They identified their problem. They used their eyes and they asked questions. And now they're beginning to plan. They're gathering information and figuring out what to do. Then they will take action. Let's see how they go about doing this. Lights out for Loggerhead. Our classroom became the Loggerhead Lab. First, we gathered lots of information. We read books. We visited an aquarium and a sea turtle hospital. We asked someone from the South Carolina Marine Turtle Conservation Program to speak to our class. We all brainstormed solutions, choosing the best ideas. Then, we got to work. We made posters and delivered them all over town. We wrote fact sheets for all the vacation beach homes. This fact sheet says, lights out for loggerheads. Let's keep our beaches dark at night. Turn off outside lights and keep curtains closed. Thank you. To pay for printing our flyers and posters, we held a bake sale. Andy, the coffee shop man, donated a whole pan of his famous granola. Happy to help. The editor promised to put my article in the community newspaper. Nice to have a new writer in town, she said. The printer gave us a discount for the loggerheads. Rebecca and Max learned how to spread the word on the internet. And Mr. J helped us write a press release. I was on TV as class spokesperson. We invited volunteers from SCUTE, South Carolina United Turtle Enthusiasts, to a town meeting. When the big night arrived, the room was packed. The room buzzed with ideas. We talked about how to make our beach a great place for turtles, how to mark nests, run nightly patrols, what to do if hatchlings get in trouble. Do keep beaches dark, turn off outside lights during nesting season. Do stay clear, don't disturb nests, adult turtles or hatchlings, and do get involved, volunteer, Help protect sea turtles on our beaches. Lights out for loggerheads campaign. At the end, we decided to form our own volunteer group. People cheered for our class. Mr. J beamed. I am proud of you all. That was the best night ever. Until... On the last evening of summer school, we went on a turtle patrol. Lots of parents came too. Everyone smiled as we watched the lights along the beach go out one by one. We had done it. Suddenly, a movement on the sand caught my eye. Over here, I whispered. We crept closer, careful to stay quiet. A crescent moon shone on the waves and the sea glittered like silver. I made out the first one, then two hatchlings. Soon the sand seemed to boil over with life. 
tiny turtles no more than two inches long burst from the nest. We watched barely daring to breathe. Would they know where to go? And what do they follow? They follow the light of the moon, that's right. That's what gets them back to the sea. Then they were off, scurrying, scurrying over the sand and into the shimmering sea. We stood together, smiling and silent with wonder. Then, just like the turtles, we followed the moon home. The end. Well, what a wonderful story, Follow the Moon Home, about these sea turtles and how this one little girl and her class, her summer school class at that, came up with a plan to help those baby sea turtles find their way home after they've hatched. And thanks to Mr. J for taking the time to teach this summer school class and to teach the students how to identify a problem, plan, take action, tell their story, and then reflect. This is wonderful. So being an activist, you can do so many things and so many good things in your community. I wonder if you have ever been an activist for anything before. It could be something big. It could be something small. It might be something within your school or even something just inside of your home. I'd be interested to hear if you have ever been an activist in anything before. If you have any ideas of something you'd like to share, don't forget, you can go to stpsb.org. There are three ways in which you can share with us. I look forward to hearing from you. Remember, keep reading and keep learning. And now a message from my puppy, Burrow. Keep learning and keep reading.